Um, what are your plans to improve bus services, especially the 788? It's hard and I can't get a seat. Well, if I'll start on this occasion, and I can indicate I've used the 788, and I actually spend quite a bit of time on the other end of the peninsula, as, um, as many in this audience uh, know, and um, it is a very, very long route. It's a very slow um, bus, and we really need to do something very significant to improve it. Uh, this government has been frozen on buses for far too long. I mean, I was in the country Victoria yesterday, and in sorry, on Monday, and indeed, in that case, they pointed out that there'd been no change in the bus route since uh, 2008. And this frozen attitude to bus services, uh, because the government has been at loggerheads with private uh, bus companies, is um, is not simply not acceptable. I think in particular on the 788, Baxter offers an opportunity to uh, look at a, a reconfiguring of bus services on the peninsula and using fast bus services uh, from a, a Baxter extension to get the outcome that's required. True, thank you. Paul. Thanks, David. Uh, look, the same uh, in a way as David, I, I've used the, the 788 and 783 bus services. I think that there is a lot of improvement uh, that could be done and uh, even as late as today I've been speaking with the Minister about undertaking a service review and doing something that should have been done many, many years ago um, that hasn't been done by consecutive governments and reviewing all of the bus services on the peninsula. Um, that is something I'm very interested in. Uh, we do have stories of people coming to my office um, talking about going to see specialists in the city uh, and there's stories of um, you know, massive, massive trips where they almost need to take a tent. Um, and I think we could be doing a lot better, uh, and that's why I'll be advocating for a service review. Um, fortunately, uh, we've been able to do a lot uh, in, in Frankston and surrounds, uh, but there's only so much you can do in three and a half years, and I think that's the next step. We've solidified ourselves as the transport hub for the peninsula, and I think the next step is to actually improve those transport links. Thank you, Paul. And Nina? Um, I would, oh, well, look, I, by and large, I would agree with, with both Paul and David. Uh, look. I remember taking that bus quite frequently 30 years ago. I mean, I grew up down in Frankston and, and went down, to, down the peninsula quite often on public transport. It was terrible then and it's terrible now and it is actually appalling that, that it hasn't improved in 30 years. Um, in terms of, it, like, frequency is one thing, it needs to be improved, it needs to be upped, you know, up a thousand percent, but it's also about um, routes and smart buses and we need to be looking at um, a, 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 an expansion of smart buses so that you're not on the bus for four hours to get you know somewhere. Um, you know the route is meandering and inefficient, and and that's fine for people who need to go on specific routes. But for people who are actually transiting, that's not it, it, it's it's useless. Um, and so we need to expand routes not just along the coast but inland as well, so that people actually start being able to use public transport in a way that is um, meaningful for them and it's, it's, it's not a compromise for them to use the bus. 